you know, we don't take evolution seriously enough. I don't want to sound mean, but you know, the way we the way we prop up those unable to kind of look after themselves if you know they're capable of having children and have children it's going to be detrimental to the human species now that's going to offend a lot of people I don't mean to offend anyone because at the end of the day everyone's got a soul and everyone is just as important and Beethoven was the seventh son in the line of six before who'd had serious brain diseases and Beethoven obviously made a contribution to the world and I'm not saying you know it's quite possible that I'm wrong and in the sense that um, deaf people have other attributes which they wouldn't have if they weren't deaf but and there's a, another point in which I think that a lot of the way a lot of the diseases that people are born with have been caused by man I've noticed a lot of people who had a lot of contact with the military um, more often have children with birth defects and, um, and I think that may well be down to contact with ammunition and perhaps more than that contact with actual warfare which exposes them to a lot of nasty shit. Um, you know, I think um, people who make ammunition, I don't think they mind if there's a bit of nasty shit. And when I'm talking about nasty shit, I'm talking about maybe a bit of depleted uranium, stuff like that going into the... going into the... Um, the ammunition, perhaps not the casings, but the actual bullet, which ends up in the enemy, because if you're putting something in an enemy, why not <laughs> put in something nasty? Make it difficult to uh, heal that person. There's war, isn't it? So, yeah, a lot of these man-made... Um, birth defects and of course then absolutely the society should do its utmost to repair what had been done to them now there's another point here about people who rely on IVF to have children my feeling is that's wrong because feel that a child is God given and I don't like the word God creator of the universe the most high whatever we find ourselves answering to when we leave the mortal earth as we all know we're going to um, so, <laughs> lost my track again. Oh yeah, IVF. Yeah, children should be God-given. And um, think about that. These people rely on IVF to have a child. Then quite possibly they're going against nature because maybe there was a reason why they hadn't. You know, maybe it was a reason, sort of, perhaps the mixture of you two personalities isn't going to produce a, a wonderful child, maybe. Or that it just, you know, wasn't meant to be. But then again, in addition to that, that child then 
grows up, maybe we'll have even more trouble having a baby. So you're kind of creating a, a baby that may possibly never be able to have babies. So you're kind of making it worse. Devolving. Who says devolvement is all a part of evolution? Perhaps it's a case of um, two steps forward, one step back, and um, perhaps let's let's now talk about the argument people would make against me which is what humans have achieved so okay now one thing I will say in a sense of a way that humans have evolved and they certainly have evolved in the process or art of having a larger number of people carry out instructions and processes to achieve a big thing they like making a ship. Making a ship requires many people um, all sort of working to the same hymn sheet. Making a bridge, making a big building, creating, if you like, the society we know today it couldn't have been done without the workforce more of that a skilled workforce trained in this society we go to school we go to university trained scientists trained doctors trained workers are trained and then they gain experience and all this has led to a step by step improvement on you could say that the training of what we've learnt from experience and how we're always able to go one step further. But the individual human has not evolved from this. Except that we're able to experience the results. We can marvel at a bridge as we drive across it. We can marvel at a building as we go up in the lift. And we can marvel at the whole infrastructure, the roads, the rail, the post, the internet, electricity. We can marvel at all that and we can use it. Driving a car has become second nature to most of us. We get in, we don't even have to think. In gear, pedal down, blum blum, jim jim. 
hurtling past each other at 60 miles an hour. Perhaps only a metre between cars. Sometimes on thin roads. Could zoom past at a collective speed of 60 miles an hour. Almost brushing wing mirrors. But that doesn't make us evolve. We watch telly, we listen to the radio. That doesn't make us evolve. We drink coffee, tea, consume massive amounts of sugar. And that doesn't make us evolve. We've, um, keep thinking we've been tricked. That's what it feels like. It feels like all humans know we'd be better off without it. Look at the number of people who go camping. I for one love camping. Stick up a tent. I mean, I particularly like going camping off campsites in the woods. Stick up a tent, get a little fire going, and I'm happy. And I'm especially sometimes happy when there's a problem to fix. Because it gives me a reason to be active, it motivates me to respond and use my ingenuity and you know got some rope and some tarpaulin and fashion some sort of thing and it's good it's good for the mind it makes you feel alive and yeah I think a lot of people are yearning more and more for nature and being more natural because subconsciously we know we're near the edge. If we carry on going in this sort of wearing lycra, tattooing our faces, extending our hair, adapting our noses and boobs and sucking out cellulite and so many pills for this, that and the other. Much more of that and <laughs> God what sort of future is that? What that sort of future is leading towards? Maybe many people think oh the next pill the next pill will have the answer that'll be the one just have a pill and all your health cares will go away. It's because we're going away from nature. We are natural beings. We have to be. We have to be in harmony with nature. We are natural. And then on. Possibly, the plan for the human extinction, extinction, or the plan for the mass population reduction system. Perhaps it began in the 1970s. You know, the hippies were right. Peace and love is all you need. The hippies were definitely right. But they were probably just a little bit ahead of their time. 
And maybe the free love. Maybe the free love thing wasn't quite such a good idea. So that's when I believe the plan possibly started. And um, because they would have seen then. We know there's powers at B pushing the pushing the it's those ones at the top of the pyramid in the first city. Him and all his uh, descendants. And they've adapted the Bible. They've put all this stuff in it, so you believe you should suffer in life. That life should be suffering, but you should suffer it gladly. And be grateful. And if you're good, and toe the line. and Because they're just, you know, just keeping us in our pens. So whether they're human or non-human, I don't know. It's scarier if they're non-human. <laughs> you know, perhaps they're scared of us. It's totally my belief that humans are good. Humans are good, but they've been fed lies been falsely educated and stripped of their minds. We've been drugged and hypnotised for so many generations we just don't realise. I think I've talked about this before. About the tea. I know it wasn't it was in my mind but it wasn't in it properly. You know, tea has this fluoride in it. And they proved that fluoride blocks your chakras which may be this link to the subconscious mind so that you sort of you know in your heart things and um, if the T blocks that you sort of also the chakra of the P